have, uh, so talking about the next 10 years, still the next, that you know, keep hearing me saying that all the time. Uh, the next guy is very interesting because he actually, in the n past 10 years, he's ha he's ha he has helped uh, 10 businesses grow to more than 10 million users. So in terms of growth, he knows what he's talking about. Uh, oh, and these guys are still actually moving. The, can you save me a coffee? No, no, well, never mind. Uh, so I'm calling on stage James Currier, please. James. I love your shirt, man. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you luck. very much. Hey, everybody. So my name is James Courier, and uh, I'm from Palo Alto. I was up here on Tuesday. We were talking about Bitcoin. And uh, the reason that I got involved with Bitcoin is because currencies are the best example I can think of of something that's a pure network effect, meaning everybody who uses your currency helps everyone else who uses the currency just like a telephone or other things. So what I've spent my career looking at is companies with network effects. And typically, the companies that produce the most value in technology are companies with network effects. If you look back over the last 13 years, somewhere between 62 and 88% of all the value created in technology has been by companies with network effects. This is LinkedIn, this is Facebook, this is Twitter, this is Google, this is, you know, these sorts of companies um, build up. These are networks, these are marketplaces. And so I've been focused on that for the last 10 years. And I believe that these network effects are actually going to be more important going forward for the next 10 years. Okay? So to get network effects, you have to get these companies to grow. Uh, and typically grow very fast. And in many of these markets, they're winner-takes-all businesses, right? So once eBay got going, it was very hard for anyone to compete with them. Um, once Google got real traction, it was hard for anyone to compete with them. So over the last, you know, Loic asked me to come and talk about growth. Uh, we know the French minister was talking about growth and innovation. And, well, what does it really mean? How do you actually operate a company so that it grows very fast? In the last, uh, last 10 years, I've started and grown um, four successful venture-backed companies. As, uh, as, as was mentioned, I've helped over 10 companies grow to over 10 million users. And right now, I'm advising and investing with my business partner, Stan, 31 different networks and marketplaces. Because it's here where the network effects and the growth really matters. And so when people work with us, they say, well, James, what's the tactic I can use to grow to 10 million people this week? What's that one little spark? Just tell me that thing and, and I'll be happy. And unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Um, it's not a gimmick. It's not a you know, one-hit wonder. It's actually a philosophy. And the good news on, uh, is actually that if you approach it properly, you can replicate these types of, of growth patterns that we've seen over the years. Okay, so how do you do it? Here are your growth choices. This is the way we look at it. There's actually, every company is ready for growth right now. Some people say, oh, it's too early to grow. But what they're talking about is, it may be too early to grow new users. But there's different types of growth. You know, the, the one that everybody talks about is the top line growth. That's the exciting thing. Right? That's what governments talk about. That's what CEOs talk about when they pitch venture guys. Oh, look at all these new users. This proves that people want this. And that's an important type of growth. But it's not the only type of growth. The next type of growth is activated growth. People came and used your product, but did they understand its real value to them? Were they activated? And then there's retained growth. They understood the value, but did they come back? And then there's monetized growth. You've got them to come back, but did you make any money out of them? We focus on these two. What we've seen over the last 10 years is that there's about 18 techniques for developing monetization growth. I'm not listing them all here. But it's interesting to know that there's really only a limited color palette that you can use when painting in your monetization growth. And on retention, there's about six retention loops that you can look at. Okay, and looking at these, honing them, and testing them, we'll talk a little bit about that. On activation, it comes down to what we call a first user experience. And most people don't think of it as a separate experience, but it needs to be. How a user first encounters your product and what they understand that value of, uh, to be for them is extremely important. We spend probably half our product development time working on the first user experience. 
but half. Most people think it's maybe 5% or 10%. We look at half of our time uh, on first user experience. And the best companies in the world for designing first user experience are the gaming companies. So go to the gaming companies, look at what they do to bring you into their world, and start to mimic that in your products. And then, now let's talk about new user growth, which everyone wants to know about. So there's generally three ways of going about it. There's word of mouth, there's viral, and then there's paid. Those are the three general ways of growing. What we've seen, interestingly enough, from an operational perspective, it's hard to do more than one well at a given time. Okay? So you've got a limited number of ways that you can grow with word of mouth. You've got a limited number of ways you can grow and channels that you can use to grow virally and a limited number of channels for the paid growth. But there's enough now. There wasn't 10 years ago, but there is now. There's enough now so that there's many ways of growing. In fact, we argue that there are more ways of growing that people have missed in the last 24 months than the ones that people have actually grabbed and made, made use of. So you've got these channels, you've got these different types of growth, but what are the operational skills you need in your company to make this happen? There are five. The first thing is you have to organize for growth. You've got to create a growth team. And I believe that even the smallest company should have the concept of a growth team. You've got to have people responsible for growing. And remember, these are four different types of growth, not just top line growth, but also monetized and retained growth. You've got to actually put the word growth in people's title. These people need to report to the CEO. They need to have a personality where they enjoy data exploration. You know, people who aren't really into data are not going to be good at growing a company. And they've got to have a pretty aggressive personality because they want to grow that company even faster than the CEO sometimes. And the pieces that often cause companies to fail in this is that the CEO doesn't give the growth team clear directive and the clear ability to break eggs. You're going to make mistakes as you try to grow. You've got to be willing to do that. And the CEO needs to be on board with the growth team. We've got a couple companies we've tried to work with where the CEO was not on the growth team and it never ends well because you've got to make clear decisions that affect the whole company. The other thing you have to do is you have to, uh, you have to compensate people based on the retained and monetized growth, not the top line growth. The second thing you need to do is really look at product strategy. What is your product to the user? Too many companies get ahead of their skis and they don't want to go back and re-examine what, what is the value I'm giving to people. And most people call this product strategy or product marketing or positioning. We tend to use the words language and psychology. What's the language? What's the exact language you're using? It matters. What do you mean? You know, but behind every great company, there is some sort of psychological insight that the user has that makes the company great. And you have to really grab that with language. What do I mean by that, James? Language examples. Uh, example. You know, we had a company where you could store your photos. We changed the language on the home page to say share your photos and traffic exploded because the users saw that this wasn't just about storing, but it was about sharing those photos and reaching out and sending them to people. Another example is we had a website where people could find a date. We changed the website around so that it was a site for helping people find a date. Oh, and if you wanted to find a date, you could do that as well. Great. But that language shift not only changed what the user thought, but it also changed our thinking about it. The whole team's idea about what this product is changed in their mind. They started building different features, they started different, using different language, and that caused growth to explode in both these cases. And what's sometimes scary for you guys who are trying to build these high growth companies is that you've got to keep revisiting the language. You can't just sit on your laurels. If you look at some of the presentations a guy from Greylock, Josh Elman gives, he was at, at Twitter, and they kept changing their language even though they were growing like crazy. They had to constantly be revisiting what Twitter was to people, and that change of language, that experimentation with language paid off uh, in the long term. You see this repeatedly with the high growth companies. The third key operational skill that you guys need to build into your companies is to have really good 
uh, data analysis and optimization loops. And what it comes down to, let me just simplify it. There's lots of stuff to be done in this area, but what it really comes down to is you need to be good at building and reading and understanding these triangle charts that come off a mixed panel. These are cohort analyses. Uh, don't look at the details. The, the point is that these cohort analyses are the lifeblood of your analysis of your company. And if you're not good at this, you're going to have a hard time growing in the ways that it's important to grow. A lot of people talk about A-B testing. Yes, we have to A-B test every page, every message, every email. True. But the real juice of that comes in looking at the flow, the A-B testing of a flow, A, B, C, D, E, F testing, if you will, and getting that loop. And one key point here is, look, if you're starting small, then you've got to do whatever it takes to get enough data through this system so that your team can, on a daily basis, iterate and iterate and change and make it better every week, every day. <clears throat> and if you don't have enough data, you've either got to buy the traffic, you've got to partner with someone, or you've got to do whatever it takes to get enough data so that your team can learn about this iterative process around the, the growth. And the other thing I'll say is that it took me years to figure out that on the engineering front, half of the effort is building the data uh, systems, not just the product. I thought, oh, you build the product and then you've got your product. It's actually not true. You don't have your product until you have the good data systems to get that feedback loop going. I didn't realize that. Uh, but now I do. I uh, learned it a few years ago. So the fourth thing, the fourth operational key is you've got to have good platform and channel tactics. We've already seen this slide, but understanding your options, understanding uh, how to work each of these channels. We had uh, Gary Vaynerchuk here earlier saying that each channel has its own slang, its own vernacular, its own way of speaking, and it's true for these growth channels as well. One more point I'll make to you is that Word of mouth as a way of growing is now resurgent. I've been looking for, for someone, maybe someone in the crowd here will, will create an app like Shazam, right? So people hold up their Shazam app and everyone says, hey, what are you doing? You know, and because we're bringing the app into the social sphere with these devices, um, it grows through uh, word of mouth. And uh, another company is uh, Urban Spoon. You shake it to make it work. And people say, hey, what are you doing? And oh, you get Urban Spoon, you know. I've been waiting for someone to do one where you can lick it. You know? And people say, what the hell are you doing? You're licking your phone. Oh, yeah, well, it's this great thing, you know, and this is what you do. Um, but no one's done that yet, but maybe they will. Uh, but, but word of mouth is resurgent, so think about how you can get people to talk about it uh, because that's really where a lot of growth is taking place. And then the last operational thing that you really need to do is you need to build a culture of growth. And the culture of growth, from my perspective, is you've got to understand that you have to iterate and fail ceaselessly. You know, I would go through months of uh, experiments, all of which would fail. But you have to sustain your optimism. You have to sustain, and you have to teach your employees to sustain the optimism because they'll get tired. They'll, they won't follow you anymore. They'll think you're not the person they thought you were because you keep failing. But failing is part of the experimentation, and it's when you hit on something that really works, then you start to see these explosive growth uh, charts that I showed you earlier. The other thing is you must be patient, okay? And, uh, you know, teaching people that, teaching yourself that, having faith, having your board have faith in you, this is something that you do through your strength of character. It's about culture. And lastly, again, it's not a one-time gimmick. It's an approach. It's a philosophy. It takes time to do. Um, I, want to, um, I want to take you through a little bit of history for viral channels because this might be interesting to some of you. How, how are these companies like Facebook? How are these companies like Twitter? How do these companies grow to tens of millions, hundreds of millions of users? And these same techniques can be applied in the enterprise area as well. It's just that very few companies in the enterprise side have done it yet. And I believe that in the next 10 years, you're going to see some multi $10 billion enterprise companies built by people who are selling an enterprise software product but are utilizing these consumer-oriented techniques within the enterprise. So I'll give you a little bit of a history on viral channels. So years ago, if you look back to 2000 up till now, the first viral channels were primarily word of mouth. People would say, hey, dude, look at this thing on the web. This is so cool. And they'd send out an email to their friends, and 
things would get viral. That's how my first company got viral. We created a, a dog test. People wanted to find out what breed of dog they were, having taken 15 questions. And we put it up, and literally eight days later, we had a million people try to hit the website. We didn't instrument it, we didn't advertise it, we literally just sent it to our 400 friends. But that was 13 years ago, and that would happen more often back then. That's declined, but it's now coming back. It's coming back because of these uh, cell phones. Remember email, right? So years ago, you could open an email address importer and send out an email to 120 of your friends like that. And uh, we actually invented the email address importer back in the day. I'm happy and not happy to say. It's been used for evil subsequently. But um, it worked very well for those years. But then the Can Spam Act came along and, and people stopped responding to email so much. And so, you know, the effectiveness of email really dropped off. Along comes MySpace. Everybody remember MySpace? I mean, this is a company that launched YouTube, right? YouTube figured out how to embed their videos inside of MySpace, and while MySpace was big, YouTube got a ton of traffic, okay? They came and went. Craigslist, Airbnb launched on Craigslist. That's how they got their first traffic. That was the channel they used uh, to get uh, pretty good growth to get going. Uh, Craigslist has now sought to block anybody from doing what Airbnb did to them uh, as best they can. So that channel has gone. Facebook, obviously a huge channel for people. This, this was the channel through which some of us were growing applications at two and a half million people a day for some of the apps that we were building. Facebook has now subsequently locked down a lot of those channels. Twitter has been coming along, but has never really gotten viral, never really gotten instrumented. It's literally more of kind of a word of mouth type of a channel. If you've got a good product, uh, Twitter will be effective for you. And then you've got iOS and you've got Android. And if you look, in the olden days, you know, we had this word of mouth novelty and now it's coming back. And notice, notice the two red dots there with the number two in them. Back in 2003, 2004, it was a very simple world. You either had word of mouth or you had email. Those are the only two ways of growing. Now look at the world. It's chaos. There's so many different ways to grow. And most of the channels are not being utilized very well. There, there are tens of companies that could have hyper growth built on today's channels that just don't exist yet. And those are opportunities sitting, waiting to happen out there because there's so many different ways to grow. Back in the old days, we had, what, 400, 800 million people. Now we have, what, 2 billion people on the internet? Connected devices, two and a half by next year. <clears throat> and then also notice the, the decline of Facebook. Really interesting. Um, no one has really come along to replace the, the growth that one could see on top of Facebook, although you'd still have to have a Facebook strategy. So um, this is sort of a brief history of, of uh, viral history. And, uh, you know, I'm here in, uh, let me back up a little bit. I'm here in Switzerland for the year. I'm taking an adventure year with my family. And uh, I'm currently looking for two companies in the early stages to sort of take on and help develop and grow. And uh, if anybody out there knows of somebody or if you are that, please shoot me an email. Uh, but I'm going to be around Europe for the next year quite a lot and happy to meet with people and be of assistance if I can. And, uh, and good luck to you. Good luck in your growing. Thank you. Thank you.